Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 30,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported every year in the United States. Now, Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that you get from the bite of an infected tick. Typical symptoms of Lyme disease include fever, headache, fatigue, and this characteristic bullseye rash means Lyme disease almost most of the time. If you do become infected, early treatment for Lyme disease is key to a quick and full recovery. This year, 2017, is predicted to be particularly bad for Lyme disease, especially in the northeastern United States. I wonder why. (laughs) Here to discuss Lyme disease. Cold and wet. Yeah, and to tell us why is Mayo Clinic microbiologist and parasite expert, Dr. Bobby Pritt. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Pritt. It's great to see you. Thanks. It's great to be here. Okay, Dr. Pritt, tell us a little bit more about, before we talk about the symptoms, signs and symptoms of Lyme disease, tell us about this disease and why it's called Lyme disease. (laughs) And it's not L-I-M-E, it's L-Y-M-E. It's L-Y-M-E. It was named after Old Lyme, Connecticut. That's where the first cases were identified. It was actually a mother who noticed that a lot of cases of what was called juvenile arthritis were being diagnosed in the community. And she said, well, this is weird. Why are we having an outbreak of a non-infectious disease? And she called the CDC, and there was an investigation, and they discovered this organism. It's always Ju- a mom. Yeah, Ju- yeah always a mom. Get to the bottom <laughs> of it. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, no kidding. So uh, arthritis is a component of one of the symptoms of Lyme disease? It is, especially if it's not treated right away. So after the initial stage, then the organism goes throughout the body, and it likes to go to the joints. And this is a bacterial infection. It is. It's a spirochete, so it's this little spiral-shaped bacterium. And it gets into the bloodstream and goes various places. It likes the nerves and it likes the joints. So why is this year supposed to be such a bad year for Lyme disease? Well, mostly because we had a mild winter. So our ticks are with us uh, over winter. They um, don't exactly go into hibernation, but they become dormant. And they live under the snow, under the leaf litter. And then as soon as the snow melts, they come out. Ah, so if there's not a lot of snow, Mm -hmm. then we see them earlier. Right. And when they're out and about, it's basically as soon as the snow melts, as soon as the ground thaws, they are out and they're ready to bite. Is this any kind of tick uh, can cause Lyme disease, or is it, a, is it a particular tick? Good question. It's a specific tick that we call the black-legged tick. Some people call it the deer tick um, because it can live <coughs> on deer. But the better term is black-legged tick, and it has it is infected with Lyme disease itself and then can transmit that organism. Well, what other color legs do ticks have? (laughs) Brown. (laughs) Brown, reddish. (laughs) This one has darker colored legs, right? And it's a smaller tick. So the adults are only the size of a sesame seed. And the nymphs that can also bite you and transmit Lyme are about the size of a poppy seed. Are people, uh, are we getting better at figuring out Lyme disease? Because over the years, you know, I'll have a friend who has it or it takes up three Mm -hmm. months before they finally figure out, oh, here's what it was. Because, for instance, they didn't have the bullseye rash or Mm -hmm. they didn't have every single one of those symptoms. Are we figuring it out more? We are, but there's still a lot we need to learn. And I think a lot of it is recognizing the disease early. It's about 70% of people that have that bullseye rash. But if you don't have the rash, then you might not think of Lyme disease. So a lot of it is just thinking about it, having the physician think about it when they're seeing the patient for the first time. All right, so you got bullseye rash, mm-hmm. uh, usually early on. The arthritis can come on later if it isn't treated. So what are the other early symptoms or signs? You can have a low-grade fever, some nausea and vomiting, malaise, just not feeling well, some muscle pains. Um, anything that we describe as a flu-like illness, I'll just say if you're not feeling well, suddenly it comes on and you've been outdoors and potentially exposed to ticks, you should probably just mention that to your doctor when you see them. Say, I've been outdoors, might have had some tick bites. Well, it's the time of year when everybody does go outdoors now. Right. So that's right. got to be, that's always has to be one of the things you think of. Mm-hmm. And Well, if you live in an endemic area where the black-legged ticks are found and transmit Lyme, that would be the upper northeast and the upper midwest. Do, do most people who have been bitten by a tick know it? No, a lot of people don't. In fact, it could be up to 50% of people that have proven Lyme disease don't remember having a tick bite. Is that right? So the tick bites you and then takes off? Well, they hang around for a while, but they may be in a spot that you don't think to look, like the back of your head or, you know, in your armpit or on your back Mm -hmm. where you can't easily see them. 
So what can we do to prevent Lyme disease? Well, how, how do we make the diagnosis? Oh, sure. We got oh, sure, sure. <laughs> well, uh, the main test is looking for antibodies uh, that the body mounts to the organism. But that has some limitations because it can take about a week for your body to form antibodies at a level we can detect. Mm -hmm. So the main diagnosis early on is clinical. It's going to the doctor, having that history of a tick bite. If you have that bullseye rash, that's diagnostic of Lyme disease. If you're in an area where Lyme disease is present, and you should just be treated. No okay. testing necessary. So this is a, but uh, you can do a blood test that will prove that you have Lyme disease. But you it can. takes the blood test a, a week or 10 days to become positive after you've been mm -hmm. bitten. Exactly. So sometimes people will treat for Lyme disease preemptively, but still get the blood test so that they can follow up to see if it turns positive later on. And the antibiotic is? Doxycycline. Unless you're allergic, that's the drug that most people get. And it, it works virtually 100% of the time? If you do it early on, that's the key is starting treatment early on. Once the, the bacteria get into your bloodstream, they go to other areas, and then you start getting some of the damage caused, like the arthritis. And so if you treat at that point, it kills the bacteria, but the arthritis is already present. So you may have some long-standing symptoms. And that doesn't go away? It's with you? It will go away eventually, hmm. but it takes a while for your body to repair all that damage. So um, arthritis, one of the long-term complications. Uh, what else? And has anybody ever died of Lyme disease? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Really? It can go to your heart. That's one dangerous place. In fact, the cardiac muscle, and you can die of a heart attack, essentially. No or a fatal Lyme arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. What are the advances being made to treat Lyme disease? Well, at this point... Um, it's pretty much still the doxycycline regimen. People are looking at other drugs for longer periods of time. Of course, my area's specialty is the diagnostics and the testing mm -hmm. in the laboratory. We have another test. It's a PCR test. It detects the DNA of the organism, and we can use that with the serology test. That's how we discovered the new organism last year that causes Lyme disease. The wow. one we're calling Borrelia mayonii after <laughs> Mayo Clinic. Right? Mayonii. Mayonii. <laughs> hey, and you know, Italian. because I love talking about ticks so much, <laughs> are there other tick-borne illnesses that people should be worried about? Mm -hmm. There are, and this same tick, this little black-legged tick, can transmit uh, the disease, the organisms that cause anaplasmosis, babesiosis, Powassan virus. So I would say, bottom line, avoid ticks, avoid tick habitat, protect yourself if you're going to be outdoors. And how do we do that? Okay, so it's the ABCs of tick prevention. So A is avoid. You just want to avoid the area where the ticks are found. That would be tall grass, uh, grasses, shrubs that go up to about your knees. They can't fly and they can't jump, but they crawl up the vegetation and then they extend their legs and they wait for you to walk by. Okay, So that's A. That's A. B is bug spray. So if you're going to be outside, you can spray DEET on exposed skin. That will repel the ticks. You can also spray a chemical on your clothing called permethrin, and that will kill the ticks. And so I recommend doing both, spraying on the skin and the clothing. And C must be then clothing. Clothing, Yay. exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's not always possible when it's really hot outside. But if you can stand it, cover up the skin. They're going to bite your skin. And so if you have less skin exposed, less biting sites. That might mean tucking your pants into your socks, wearing long sleeve shirts, wearing a hat. And the last thing, of course, is when you come in from being outdoors, do a good tick check of yourself, your pets, and your kids. And if you find one, remove it yourself or? Yes, remove it right away. Okay. That's one of the most important things you can do. It takes at least 48 hours for the tick to transmit infection. And so faster you get it off, the better. And some things it can transmit faster. Lyme disease, we know it takes a couple of days. Right. There's a song like that, isn't it? I want to check you for ticks. <laughs> 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 Got to do romance. it. <laughs> Mayo Clinic microbiologist and parasite expert, Dr. Bobby Pritt on Lyme disease. Thanks so much for being with us, Dr. You're Pritt. You're welcome.